Hello everyone, this is G and I'm back with another video. I hope you're all doing well. So today's video is a bit off the cuff and sudden for me. I wasn't planning on making a video today, but with all the news going around about The Last of Us and the oppressive censorship going on with uh, criticism of that game, I thought I would weigh in. So this is going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to take a sort of, uh, I guess, 3,000 feet in the air, you know, uh, type of view, sort of overlooking everything as opposed to just addressing that. Though I will eventually make a video about the Last of Us and the drama surrounding that, mainly because uh, it's gotten out now that Anita Sar Anita Sarkeesian uh, was involved. Apparently, what's his name, Druckmann, was influenced or inspired by her. I have to do my uh, research, but apparently, she influenced the uh, game. So, given that I don't like Anita and I do not consider her to be a uh, gamer or a representative of women in video games, I will definitely uh, come back to this topic. But what I wanted to discuss more was censorship and censorship online, which is becoming a bigger and bigger problem, it seems, by the day. So whether it's The Last of Us, right, and um, companies representing Sony running around uh, trying to copyright strike videos and channels. Sorry about the city noise. I don't know what's going on. But uh, Heel vs. Babyface has done videos about it. He got, he got a copyright strike, or at least a, someone attempted to copyright strike him. I'll link his video. But he got it. Geeks, J Jeremy at uh, Geeks and Gamers got it. Um, Just Some Guy got it. Uh, Mr. H... Reviews got it. Several channels have been uh, attacked, right, with the threat of the uh, uh, copyright strike, right, false flagging, because they have had, at least in my opinion, the reason is because they have had negative opinions about some very controversial topics about, or rather found in The Last of Us, in particular. Uh, one particular character who honestly looks to me like has the head of a woman and the body of a man. And then some uh, leaks about uh, crunch and culture and a lot of, you know, again, Anita's influence. A lot of stuff, a lot of tea, as the saying goes, has been spilt about Naughty Dog and their inner workings. Right? So, there's that. But there's also people like, say, Susie Liu, who, according to the videos I've seen, runs around and tries to copyright strike everybody who says a negative word about her. Or even more recently, Square Enix, trying to copyright strike videos and copyright strike channels who were showing the ending of part one of their Final Fantasy VII remake. So, I wanted to address more of this censorship than necessarily The Last of Us itself. Though I will be coming back to that at a later time once I've done my research and have a bit more of an understanding of what's really going on. But the interesting thing is that while I do hold Naughty Dog Studios, Suzy Lou, Square Enix, and many others who have been caught uh, false flagging or, or, in, or otherwise abusing YouTube's uh, copyright system and their reporting rules, I think that the biggest culprit, the, uh, the, the I don't want to say person per se, but the, I guess you could say institution, right? I can't think of a better word, right? Most responsible for this is YouTube itself. Now you may be wondering, Gene, why is it that YouTube are the most guilty in your mind? Well, let me explain why. Let me give you a hypothetical scenario. Let's say you have a police officer, right? 
Let's say this police officer is a Democrat, right? Now, let's say they're doing their job on the beat, and they see two people in a knockdown, drag-out, violent fight. One person has a Biden pin on their chest. The other person has a Trump pin on their chest, right? So one is a Democrat, one's a Republican, right? Now, imagine that this police officer, instead of doing their job, right, their professional duty, which is to come in, break up the fight, arrest the parties, take them to the uh, station house and sort things out there. Imagine that this police officer instead just decided to not intervene in this fight, to not break it up, right? On top of this, let's say this officer not only refuses to do their job and break up the fight as they're supposed to, but they also conveniently drop their nightstick and their pepper spray and their service pistol. And they conveniently just happen to turn their head when the Biden supporter grabs these weapons and uses them against the Trump supporter. Now, let's imagine that the reason why this police officer not only abandoned their duty, but allowed their tools, right? Tools that are supposed to be used to keep the public peace, right? To keep people, regardless of their affiliation, safe. Why they turned a blind eye and a blind ear and, a, and allowed this Biden supporter to use these, these tools and use them as oppressive, offensive weapons to hurt another person is because the officer themselves is a Democrat. In fact, the officer themselves is a fellow Biden supporter and they can't bring themselves to arrest a fellow Biden supporter. That is how I view YouTube in this scenario. And I want to be clear, this is not meant to be an attack on the police on Biden supporters, on Trump supporters, or on politics in general. I am pretty neutral on all of that. I'm just using it as an example. I don't want people to get it twisted. I'm indifferent toward Biden. I'm indifferent toward, toward Trump. I'm largely indifferent toward the police unless something goes wrong. So this is not meant as an attack on anyone. It is a hypothetical situation. Right? But following... Right, following the story of this hypothetical situation, right, this is how I view YouTube. You have these constant fights, these constant battles between fans and creators, between SJWs and anti SJWs, or whatever you want to call it. And YouTube, instead of, you know, monitoring the situation and Stepping in when needed to break up the the uh, fighting, for example, if someone doxes or someone false flags, right? Instead of enforcing the rules objectively and impartially, right? They just sit back and just watch it all happen because they don't want to uh, police their own side. They don't want to. Uh, get in trouble with the media, right? Especially the more liberal progressive media, right? So they just stand back, in my opinion, and let this stuff happen. And then when you have instances such as uh, uh, companies representing Naughty Dog Studios and Sony Entertainment or Suzy Lou or Mundane Matt or Square Enix or others running around false flagging people trying to copyright strike and get channels taken down, and even other things such as um, um, lower monetization or demonetization. Many channels I follow talk about how they can't use certain words, right, because they fear being demonetized. Many channels, especially those that, again, maybe lean more conservative, you know, have to do things like um, run ads, or they have to basically take a spot out of their own video 
that have to uh, promote a product. For example, I know that Yellow Flash, who is a member of Comicsgate, does this. He does this for uh, uh, Visualits, I think it is. And I know that Lauren Chen, uh, who also goes by Roaming Millennial, does this, right? She will take a moment or, or two out of her videos, usually at the beginning from what I've seen, and she will uh, promote certain products because it's paid promotion, right? And I want to be clear, I'm not criticizing these two, nor am I saying that um, taking paid promotion is bad. I understand. People got to make a living. This is not a criticism of that. What this is a criticism of, of YouTube is of YouTube creating a situation where content creators, especially those that are more contrarian, that are critics or very critical, again, don't necessarily follow the party line or who are more fans and who are vocal fans and will um, state their piece, especially if, if, if it's a critical opinion, right? A lot of these channels, at least from best I can see, have to do these type of things, not because they want to take paid promotion in every instance, but because they can't make money otherwise, right? They have to do this or they don't, or, or, or they'll make next to nothing on the channel. And in my opinion, that's just not right. They shouldn't be forced into a corner, more or less, to do something that, that, that they may not want to do. Again, each person is an individual. I cannot read minds. But I don't think some of these channels would be doing paid promotion of products that usually aren't even related to the videos. For example, what, what does a Ridge Wallet got to do with a comic book? Right? But they take this on because they can't make money off of YouTube. Right? Because YouTube demonetizes or restricts videos so that they can't get as much um, coverage, right? They don't spread as far. They can't become viral. And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then, of course, they don't make money or they make less money, right? And to me, this is just oppression, right? It is oppression by making speaking out, saying anything negative, a penalty, right? It's penalizing people for not having the right opinions. It's an attempt, in my opinion, to silence people because they don't have the right opinions because now you're making them pay for it in some way or fashion. And what's worse is that, like that police officer, tools that are meant to actually combat actual, say, um, abuse of copyright, right? Now, those rules, those tools, that system is being abused to try to silence people who dare to have a dissenting opinion. When you have a large entity trying to silence the, the murmurers, right? What you get is tyranny, right? Here's what, the, at least according to Google, who's also get, guilty of this in, in their own ways. Okay, but here is what it says. It says, cruel and oppressive government or rule. A nation under cruel and oppressive government. Cruel, unreasonable, or arbitrary use of power or control. Hmm. 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 Sounds very familiar. I don't know if we're talking about the People's Republic of China or YouTube at times whenever I read that description. And it's sad because this shouldn't be happening, especially from an American company. I understand that YouTube is an international thing now, but its roots, its origins are in the USA, right? We are supposedly the uh, country found, who, who founded ourselves on freedom, right? A bunch of angry colonists throwing tea into, into, into the, the uh, 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 Boston Harbor, right? And fighting and, and rebelling against the English crown because no representation, right? 
voices were not being heard, people were not being listened to, and then when those people started speaking up, what happened? The English power, right, stomped them down. And what happened? People rebelled. And I don't know if a literal nation is going to be born from all this, but this is certainly going to cause, I think, a revolution of sorts. And that revolution, I think, in time is going to be against YouTube, right? Because people are not going to stand for this, right? People like just some guy, heel versus babyface, uh, Mr. H Reviews and others, as Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. They are not the types to curl up, right, like a dog and, and, and tuck their tails in between their uh, legs, right? They're going to shout louder, right? They're going to signal boost as much as they can because guess what happens? People find out about them, and then they find out about other people, then they find out about other people, and people start talking, and people start making videos, like myself, and guess what? It just gets louder and louder and louder. The voices that are against the oppression of a person's opinion, their negative opinion, become louder and louder and louder. Had Square Enix, had Naughty Dog, had Suzy Lou just let people have their say, say their negative stuff, and just let it go, it would just let it go, just pass on by, it would blow over, just like most things do. But no, when these people go in and they, or rather I say these companies, creators, I don't quite know what the term is at times, but when they go in, and they use the tools available to them, YouTube's copyright system, and they abuse the copyright system. They abuse these tools, and YouTube does nothing. YouTube does nothing but sit there, and they don't penalize them. I haven't heard of them being penalized. Don't penalize them. Don't uh, shut their channels down. Don't do anything to show them that, that hey, you cannot abuse our rules and, and, and our tools like this. When YouTube doesn't do their job, this is what happens. You get tyranny. And it's nothing new, right? We've, we've seen it on Twitter. We've seen it on Patreon. We've seen it on plenty of other um, uh, platforms. Uh, it's happened to a, a degree even with with um, crowdfunding, right? S sites like uh, Kickstarter, Clownfish, Clownfish TV has done a lot of videos about that, right? About how they kicked certain creators, such as Richard C. Meyer, right? Um, who was also known as uh, uh, Comics Matter, was formerly Diversity in Comics, right? Made the uh, uh, very popular Jawbreakers Lost Souls, and he initially went to Kickstarter, right, because that's what people did at the time, and Kickstarter kicked him out, kicked him away. Not because there was anything especially offensive about Lost Souls, I know because I purchased and read that book. I thought it was a good comic. But because they didn't like him, right, he at the time was the poster boy of Comicsgate, right, he was getting all of this attention off the negative, from the pros and from the press and from the media that were painting him and mischaracterizing him as an alt-right Nazi, which anybody who's followed Comicsgate or follows him personally knows is the furthest from the truth. But the mainstream media painted him this way. The mainstream media had people in the industry, in comics, right, who worked for major comic companies as part, also as part of Kickstarter, and guess what? They kicked him out. He went to Indiegogo, he made a huge, and then Ethan went to Indiegogo with a cyber frog, and now everybody is, is going there. Because guess what? These two men, whatever my issues with Ethan, these two men, right, whose biggest sin when it, when it, when it came to crowdfunding was being part of Comicsgate, and being critical of the objectively awful comics that modern day comics puts out, they were kicked out of Kickstarter because they were the living embodiment of the wrong opinion. 
They were the living embodiment of the dissenting opinion, and Kickstarter couldn't have that. So they went to Indiegogo, and now everybody goes to, to, to Indiegogo. So thanks, Kickstarter. You played yourselves. But this is what happens. This is what happens with social media. It becomes a tyranny. When you have these websites, these companies who will not enforce their own damned rules, when they will not police the space appropriately and justly and objectively and fairly and impartially, this is what you get. You get tyranny, where anybody who has the gall to not agree, to not be lockstep in line with the popular mainstream opinion, right, gets or, or faces a much larger possibility and chance of being punished. And it's disgusting. So, lastly, I know that for myself, I will continue to cover whatever I want. So, I will cover The Last of Us when I get to it. I will cover comics. I will cover whatever it is that is of interest to me. And I'm not going to jump in the line or say what YouTube might want me to say or what the mainstream narrative might be if that's not what I agree with. I will simply speak my piece and speak my mind. And if my opinion is a, is a dissenting opinion, then that's exactly what I will voice. And I will not allow YouTube to tell me that I can't. So long as I still have a brain that, that uh, works and a mouth that speaks, I will say my piece. And if YouTube don't like it, well, too damn bad. Sigh about your damn luck. But anyhow, that's the video. Please let me know what you think, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good night, or day. Bye.